Professor Jagdish? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, welcome. Welcome to Iconex Talks. And the uh, theme of the Iconex Talks is to connect the world and the universe. And uh, so really good morning or good afternoon or good evening to wherever you are in the world. And uh, to my uh, friends from China and uh, Neiman Hao. And also I want to wish all of you Spring Festival and hope you have an enjoyable and safe Spring Festival and then have a great uh, new year of the Ox. Today we have got three uh, very distinguished speakers and uh, so they're going to share their exciting uh, science with us. And then the first speaker is Professor Gorsen Shen from Institute of uh, Semiconductors at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Professor Shen has uh, uh, done his PhD from the USTC in Hafei in 2003 in chemistry. And uh, then he has really done some pioneering work in the field of nanowires and then flexible image sensors or so. And then he has published more than 300 papers and his uh, H index is uh, 76. So, so he's got large number of citations. So that means his work has had a high impact. He's also won many awards, including NSFC Outstanding Young Investigator Award, and also that the Chinese Material Society first prize of the Science and Technology Award and second prize of the Science and Technology Award of Beijing. Professor Shen is going to share with us today about uh, the nanowire flexible image sensors. And then uh, please join me welcoming Professor Shen. Professor Shen, floor is yours. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening for uh, everybody. And thanks, uh, Dr. Jagdish, for the uh, kind introduction. And uh, today, I will uh, introduce some of my work on, on this uh, nanowire for uh, flexible image sensors. I just uh, uh, slightly uh, changed my uh, title. Yeah, I, I just simplified the title uh, to uh, flexible nanowire image sensors. Yeah, I'm Guo Jinxin from uh, Institute of Semiconductors, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, here is the content of my uh, my talk. Yeah, it's include uh, includes many uh, four parts. First is the motivation and then strategy to improve nanowire photo detectors. And then uh, following this part should be the uh, flexible image sensors. And finally, I will give a, a short conclusion. Uh, first is the motivation. Uh, as you know, uh, that in, in, in recent years, the uh, artificial intelligence is a, a very, very hot topic uh, for both the uh, industry and for the uh, basic research. And uh, artificial intelligence is a, a, a very uh, a complicated uh, science area. And uh, uh, it uh, mainly focuses on the computer science and uh, for the AI, it's mainly uh, emphasizes uh, the creation of intelligent machines uh, that can work and uh, react like our uh, human beings. Among the uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, the ro robotics is the major uh, field related to this uh, AI, AI field. Uh, we want to uh, design and uh, um, Fabric some robot, robots uh, that can uh, just handle tasks uh, such as uh, uh, maneuveration and uh, navi uh, navigation like our, uh, like our uh, human beings. Uh, for the uh, robotics, uh, there are mainly uh, two, uh, two directions. The first direction is that we just we try, we try, try, try to make the robots uh, look like uh, our human. Yeah, here I show some uh, four images uh, about four different uh, uh, robots just designed by uh, different countries. For example, the first one is designed by Japan, and uh, here shows the uh, the robot and its uh, human model. You can see from this image you can that uh, they look uh, very uh, very alike uh, each other. And uh, below this part is uh, is a. Uh, 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 a uh, uh, robot uh, designed by Chinese research in USTC. Is, uh, the, the, the robot is called Jia Jia, and uh, therefore this uh, uh, robot, uh, robot you, can do, you can see that it also looks like uh, very like a, a human, all right? And uh, with uh, uh, controlled by about uh, 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 12, uh, yeah, 12 uh, controllers, and this, this uh, uh, robot can uh, just show some, uh, some, uh, some uh, 
uh, motions like our uh, our uh, human. And uh, in this in this uh, in this image shows some uh, shows a uh, 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 robot from uh, Singapore, and uh, below this is a uh, robot from uh, United States. And for all these uh, four uh, robots, you can see that they look uh, very very like a human, right? If we put a, a human and this robot together, you you uh, if, uh, you, you you can even uh, didn't know which is robot and which is uh, is a human, right? And for the robot, another direction is just to uh, make the robots uh, behave uh, uh, more like uh, like our human. Uh, here shows the uh, most advanced uh, company about uh, it's uh, called. Uh, Boston Dynamics, and uh, for the Boston Dynamics, they developed um, the most uh, advanced uh, robots that can uh, behave uh, very like human. As you can see here, uh, the uh, the Boston Dynamics de de developed very uh, several kinds of uh, uh, robots, and some of them are even commercial available. Uh, that's amazing, right? And uh, you can see from their website that they call this uh, this uh, uh, this robot Atlas, and it, it called it said that the world's most dynamic humanoid robot robot uh, atlas is a, a research platform designed to push the limits of whole body mobility yeah uh, for this uh, this uh, robot is advanced control systems and state of the art hardware give the robot the power and balance to demand the human level uh, agility you can see you can see that it can uh, demand the human level agility and here, I uh, uh, I think it's uh, just uh, this year, uh, human uh, Boston Dynamics released uh, uh, a movie. Here, you can see. Yes, about their latest uh, uh, robot. Okay, so that's this movie is quite amazing, and this. Uh, uh, this robot can uh, dance just like a uh, human, and the control system is very, very advanced. Okay, okay I can just let uh, just put, uh, put some parts. You can see here, it sounds just like a human, right? Okay, that's a, that's a very, very, very great. And then here, uh, it's a, a cartoon about the, the structure of this uh, Atlas the, uh, robot. You can, you can see here, you can see from this uh, this cartoon that this uh, robot compared with the previous slide shows the uh, robots. This uh, uh, robots just, uh, you, you can see that they don't look like a human, yeah, but they react like a human. So that means that they can, uh, they, their behavior is more like a human than their, what they look. And uh, for uh, researchers, uh, what we want is that we can make a robot both look like human and also react like a human. Yeah, just uh, uh, like this, uh, this movie shows. The, you can see that this robot just look like human, and also you can you can, can think themselves, and they can uh, behave like having human. So uh, to make human like robot, uh, uh, here the human like means that they can they both look like human. And also, they uh, behave like human. Yeah, to make human like robot, uh, developing high performance sensors is the most, most basic and important steps. Without uh, uh, high performance sensors, a robot can't be behave like human, right? And uh, uh, other human beings uh, live in a very, uh, uh, very wonderful world. When we, uh, when we were born, and uh, when we open our eyes, uh, we know that this beautiful uh, woman is my mother, and this this uh, this guy is our, uh, my father, right? And uh, when we were in kindergarten and in primary school and in other uh, other schools, uh, we were told that uh, human have five senses. Here shows the uh, image you can see here. We we have five senses. What uh, what kind of five senses? Uh, senses here shows these uh, five senses. The first one is the nose. You can. It's uh, related with our nose. With this nose, we can smell different kind of uh, smells from different kind of gases, and this smell just related to uh, related to our uh, of olfactory uh, ability. And the second sense is uh, is the sight. Sight that means related to to our eyes. 
with our eyes, we can see different, uh, we can see the world, we can see different colors, right? And this is just that means the visual uh, ability. And the third one is touch related to our hand and our, our skin. Yeah, with this, uh, our hand, we can touch the world, we can touch it, uh, different uh, harness or soft uh, object. And this means uh, we have a uh, tactile ability. And then the fourth uh, sense is uh, hearing uh, related to, it, to, uh, related to our ear. With air, we can, we can uh, uh, hear different sounds. And this is the auditory ability. And the final one is uh, uh, related to our mouth. We can taste the different, uh, uh, different things. That it means we have the gastro ability. Yeah, with these four senses, we can communicate with the world. Ah, that's the uh, uh, this five senses is very very important for our human beings. Without this four, this this five senses, we uh, uh, we didn't uh, we we kind of feel that it's wonderful world. Uh, to make, uh, just as I said, to make uh, the uh, robot, a uh, human-like robot, we, just, we, we want to this, make this robot uh, look like human and also behave like human. So uh, if we want robot to uh, look, uh, behave like uh, uh, our human, we, we, at least we need this robot to uh, uh, possess uh, five, our five senses. So that means we, we, we need to uh, define, uh, de uh, design different kind of uh, devices or systems to uh, make this uh, uh, robot feel, uh, feel the world. For example, uh, we want to make robot have the uh, visual ability, have the, have the auditory ability, have the gastro ability, have the olfactory ability, and also the tactile ability. Yeah. Uh, if we want to make the, they have these abilities, we need some kind of uh, electronic devices or optoelectronic devices. For example, we can use photo sensors to make the uh, robot have visual ability, and we can, we can also have design some pressure sensors to have uh, to make the uh, robot have tactile uh, ability. Yeah, with this kind of uh, electronic uh, uh, devices, of auto electronics, electronics uh, devices, and uh, robots can feel and touch the world uh, just like other uh, human beings. Uh, this slide shows what uh, what we what we do in my group. Yeah, we we just focus on uh, low dimensional nanostructures, and with this low dimensional nanostructures, we can design the different kind of flexible sensors. Uh, in my group, uh, uh, we mainly focus on uh, three kinds of uh, sensors. First one is the photo sensors, uh, second one is the pressure sensors, and the third one is the gas sensors. Besides these sensors. We also designed some uh, flexible energy supplies. As you know, that for to make the uh, sensors uh, uh, work, uh, you need some uh, energy, energy supplies, and also we need some uh, flexible energy supplies, uh, just uh, not like the uh, rigid energy devices. And uh, with this sensor, we try to make the, uh, uh, apply these sensors on a uh, robot and to make the, the robot feel, uh, feel the world. And uh, today I, I will just uh, introduce uh, our work on the first kind of uh, sensor, that's uh, uh, photo sensors for image, image sensor applications. Uh, here shows the, uh, uh, our eyes. Yeah, you know, among the five uh, uh, kind of uh, sensors, uh, more than 80% uh, uh, of the information we, we got uh, from the world just come from, the, from the, our eyes. And with our eyes, we can feel uh, the, the size of the object, and, and we can uh, feel the uh, we can see the brightness, we can see the color, and we can see the movement, and also many many other things. And then in the right part, I show the uh, structure of uh, our eyes, and uh, the most uh, it, it, it uh, composed of different uh, different uh, uh, functions. And uh, among this uh, these different uh, functions. The, the most important of the three is the lens and the retina and the optical nerves. And then the, uh, below this slide, I show the uh, show what we can we can see the world here. I show a, a letter A. Yeah, our eyes can see this uh, this letter and uh, see, see this letter and form uh, form an image from the uh, retina. And this uh, image can. Uh, uh, transferred by the optical nerve to our brains, and our brains then 
uh, just remember this uh, this uh, this image. Okay, uh, 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 Professor uh, John Rogers uh, did some uh, very uh, pioneer uh, work on uh, on this. Uh, uh, designed some uh, flexible electronic eyes uh, eyes, and uh, the, here shows the uh, uh, his first uh, okay. His first work just published on Nature. He designed the hemispherical electronic eye camera based on the compressible silicon auto electronics. They just use some silicon, conventional silicon devices, for example, silicon photo direct and the silicon based PN dial. And here shows the process of how they uh, how they make uh, this uh, kind of uh, hemi, uh, hemispherical elect electronic eyes? They use the just the transfer the process and to uh, to uh, transfer this uh, this devices to the uh, hemis uh, hemispherical uh, systems, and then finally they can make this this uh, systems include the the the, uh, the the eye camera and the uh, circuit, and uh, you can see here with this uh, hemispherical uh, uh, air camera uh, eye camera. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, the the letters can be formed and just formed on uh, 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 through this uh, this eyes, and uh, for uh, this uh, for this uh, chemical uh, hemispherical uh, uh, eyes, uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, compared with the uh, planar uh, planar camera, uh, these hemispherical devices can show a very very unique uh, uh, image. Uh, 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 for different parts, just uh, like our uh, our, hum uh, our human eyes, uh, but uh, that's uh, one thing that's the uh, biggest challenge for this uh, 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 hemispherical image is that uh, this uh, it has only uh, very simple objects, so the uh, curvature of the pitiful uh, surface uh, changes with the magnification in a manner that leads to a mis mismatch uh, with the shape of the detector areas. Uh, uh, so that means this behavior uh, just uh, strongly uh, degrades the image performance. Uh, therefore, uh, it's just uh, lim limiting, uh, limiting the advantage of this chemical uh, spherical uh, images. And also, uh, the solution uh, to, uh, to resolve this problem is uh, uh, that demand, uh, de uh, demand the curvature of these uh, detector areas can change it in accordance, a coordinate uh, manner with the magnification. That means that with different mag magnifications, the curvature of the device of the detector I can, I can change. It. So it can show uh, identical shapes of the images and the detect uh, different surfaces at all zoom settings. Uh, uh, just uh, driven by this, uh, this, this uh, challenge, uh, later uh, in, in about uh, 2011, uh, John Rogers designed uh, uh, dynamically uh, tunable hemispherical uh, electron eye camera. Yeah, here, sh here shows this. Yeah, uh, 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 systems is uh, published in, in PNAS. and here shows that uh, the, the 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 curvature of this uh, device can be controlled by the liquid. As you can see, that uh, there are some space for the liquid in and the liquid out. And this the liquid and the uh, the zoom uh, can be uh, tuned uh, by this uh, by this uh, liquid, and uh, uh, for the uh, high performance uh, image sensors and the uh, electronic uh, eye camera, uh, the, the the device uh, structure is important. But uh, another another part is that the high performance uh, photo detector areas are also very important. So that's uh, just the, what we do in micro. We try to de uh, de uh, design the uh, high performance, flexible uh, photo detector areas for the uh, application in, in, in image, uh, Im image sensors. Yeah. Uh, for the flexible uh, photo detectors, they have uh, different kinds of applications. For example, we can design the uh, flexible photo detector arrays for application in uh, flexible uh, image sensors. And also for some uh, touchless uh, control and for some smart homes. And uh, flexible uh, advantages of flexible uh, devices, the most important advantage of flexible photo detectors is that the, the photo detector uh, can feel, fit uh, very well with non planar surfaces. And uh, I think this uh, just can't be realized by the convention, uh, con uh, conventional planar uh, devices. And uh, 
uh, these photogenetics can be used in uh, many areas. Uh, in my group, we, we, we mainly use uh, semiconductor nanowires uh, to uh, make uh, these uh, flexible photodetectors because uh, uh, semiconductor nanowires provide a number of opportunities and uh, compa uh, capabilities. For example, uh, nanowires have, uh, have very unique geometries and also it has uh, very outstanding mechanical flexibility, flexibility and also very excellent uh, electronic and optoelectronics. And all this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, make uh, make their uh, uh, nanowires a very good candidate for flexible uh, image sensors. Uh, this slide just shows the uh, uh, roadmap of uh, our work on nanowire image sensors. We just uh, began our work in about 2000, uh, 2007. In that, in that, uh, in that, in uh, that area, uh, uh, yes, we try we uh, start our work from single nanowire uh, photo data. Then we can make uh, uh, design some strategies to improve the performance of single nanowire devices, and then we can uh, design the. Uh, um, uh, nanowire photo detector arrays and to make some image sensors and also we can make uh, some artificial visual story systems and also some smart uh, infrared sensing and in the following slides I just I will just show uh, what we done uh, in my group so uh, give, give you some uh, details yeah the, uh, the, yeah uh, the third part uh, three uh, the, uh, the the second part of our uh, of my talk is that uh, we design uh, we design some strategies to improve the nano performance of uh, nano wide photo detectors. Uh, as I just just said that we start uh, start our work on uh, single nano wide devices. Actually, uh, the single nano wide devices uh, the the process to make uh, single nano wide devices is very similar with uh, silicon based. Uh, uh, devices. Uh, the only difference is that we transfer our, uh, we design, uh, we directly uh, make this uh, uh, flexible device on some polymer uh, substrate uh, instead of silicon substrate. And the design the uh, uh, single or nanowire device is a very important way to get some information about uh, uh, the photo uh, photo uh, photo uh, response properties of the nanowire itself. Yeah, uh, from this, uh, you can see here. Uh, here, this, in this image, you see the single nanowire devices, and when this uh, this uh, uh, images, uh, this uh, this devices was irradiated with light, and the, the conductance of the device just show uh, obvious change. And with this single nanowire devices, we can get some very important uh, parameters of uh, the photo response performance. For example, we can get uh, the uh, this uh, possibility and uh, external quantum efficiency and the detectivity and uh, many other parameters. For example, uh, response time, recovery time, and many others. Right? And uh, uh, as we uh, fabricated our device on flexible uh, substrates, and uh, the final uh, devices show very good uh, uh, flexibility. Yeah, you can see from this image, uh, we can bend our device to different degrees, and also we can bend our device to different cycles, maybe thousand or, 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 or even uh, uh, longer cycles. And under this uh, different different cycles and different uh, bending degrees, uh, the devices just show uh, uh, very good, uh, very very good performance. It didn't degrade with the uh, with the bending degree or uh, bending cycles. Uh, for uh, for uh, researchers working on this uh, uh, area, uh, there are many uh, uh, three three types of devices uh, are fabricated. But the first one is the photoconductive uh, type of photo detectors, and the second one is the photo gated uh, type, and the third one is the photo voltaic uh, type. And all these three uh, types show a uh, very good uh, performance and. Uh, uh, maybe if you uh, we can design different kind of uh, devices for different different applications, and uh, here I show some uh, results on single nanowire devices. For example, uh, this uh, this uh, this works about the single single crystalline indium sulfide nanowire based flexible uh, visible light photo detectors. With these single nanowire devices, uh, what do we can get? Yeah. Uh, the first image shows the structure of this uh, this photo detectors and the. Uh, this image shows the uh, photo response to light with different wavelengths. That means we use different lights, we use different materials, and we can get a different kind of uh, photo detector response with different uh, light. 
And from uh, this single nanowire device, we can also get uh, spectral respons uh, responsivity. Uh, that means, uh, you know, I gave you uh, one device and after you check this uh, spectral responsivity, uh, you can see uh, the response, uh, most, uh, uh, the highest uh, response uh, to uh, what kind of uh, wavelengths. And also uh, this photo response to light with different lens intensities can also be get, uh, you can get information about this, uh, this, this part. And also we can get some uh, response time, yeah, this response time of the devices and also recovery time of the devices. Yeah, they, all this, uh, this, uh, this uh, curves, uh, these curves and uh, data show uh, uh, what we can get uh, with the single nanowire devices. Uh, with uh, different materials, we can uh, we can design the uh, flexible uh, uh, photo detector response to different uh, uh, wavelengths. Yeah, uh, you can see here. I show some uh, some examples. Uh, yeah, we can design the flexible uh, UV photo detectors, visible visible photo detectors, and infrared photo detectors. Uh, what's different between this this kind of uh, this kinds of uh, uh, photo detectors? That uh, it's very simple. Yeah, we can. Uh, based on the uh, band gap of semi nanowires, nanowires, we can design it. We can just design the photo detector sensing to uh, light with, with different, different uh, wavelengths. That means if we want uh, to design some UV photo detectors, with, we need some semiconductors, semiconductors with wide band gap. If we want, if we want to uh, uh, fabricate some infrared photo detectors, we need some uh, uh, we need some uh, some uh, nanowires uh, with very uh, very uh, uh, very narrow uh, band gap. Uh, yeah, as I, say, I just said, that uh, with single nanowire, uh, uh, very, uh, single nanowire devices, they can get many information, but there are some big problems uh, related with single nanowire de devices. Uh, the first one is that you can see from these curves, you can, you can uh, see from the count that for uh, most of the na single nanowire devices, they have very low photo current. Yeah. And another, another uh, problem is that. Uh, uh, we can uh, make a uh, one uh, single nanowire devices, but well, for the real applications, we need some photo detector arrays. That means we need many uh, devices with uh, with this nanowire. But for si single nanowire devices, uh, we it's easy to make one devices, but for, to make uh, uh, device arrays is very difficult. Yeah, that means it's very difficult to to uh, to uh, make devices for large area systems applications. That's the two big problems related to single nanowire device. Uh, how to resolve these problems? The first uh, two are uh, the problems of uh, problems of low photo current. We just use uh, some heterostructures or organic and inorganic hybrid structures or different uh, uh, device uh, integrations to uh, resolve the uh, low uh, photo current uh, problems of single nanowire devices. Uh, to uh, resolve the uh, difficult for large area applications, we just use some nanowire arrays. Yeah, we design some large area nanowire arrays, then we can then it's easy for us to make uh, some devices arrays. So in the uh, following slide, I, I will just show uh, how we can, uh, what we can do, yeah, to resolve this problem. Yeah, the first uh, example is that we can use some quantum dot uh, decorated nanowires. Uh, here, uh, here this uh, TM image shows the, uh, we can use zinc oxide and nano, uh, quantum dots to that decorate zinc tin uh, uh, oxide uh, nanowires. Uh, with this uh, quantum dot, we can uh, really uh, enhance the, the enhance the photo current of the devices. You can see from the from this uh, this curves, the blue curves related to the quantum dot decorated nanowires. This red curve just related to the uh, nanowires. You can see that the the the, the uh, photo current is enhanced about uh, six uh, uh, six times. Uh, compared with the uh, single nanowire devices. And uh, we, we did some experiment results and also some uh, simulation results. And from this one, you can see that uh, between this uh, zinc oxide and zinc tin oxide, uh, they are form some uh, type two hydrojunctions. These hydrojunctions miss the uh, photo generated uh, electrons move to zinc tin uh, sulfide, uh, zinc tin oxide and nanowires. And this uh, photo generated holes move to zinc oxide. So the separate the, the, the electron and the host, uh, and then uh, this result resulted in uh, enhanced uh, uh, enhanced uh, photo current. Another another uh, uh, advantage is that uh, with this uh, hydrojunctions, electron-rich regions 
uh, was formed uh, close to the uh, quantum dot and a whole, uh, just a whole rich region uh, uh, close to the zinc tin oxide. And also, uh, this behavior can also reduce the recombination uh, in uh, hole and uh, electrons and also uh, increase the uh, photo current. Yeah, in fact, uh, this uh, form, uh, form into the hydro junctions is, uh, is a very unique, uh, it's a very uh, universal method for uh, the enhanced uh, for photo current. We can use quantum dot to depth, decorate nanowires. We can also use many other methods to uh, enhance the, to decorate the nanowires. For example, uh, uh, besides this semiconductor quantum dots, we can use also, uh, we can also use some uh, metal uh, metal uh, nanoparticle to decorate, uh, decorate the nanowires. We can, all, yeah, you can see that uh, with this uh, nano uh, metal nanoparticles, the golden nanoparticles, we can also enhance the uh, performance of uh, uh, nanowires. And also, we can uh, form some unique uh, composite nanowires. For example, we can use uh, we can use uh, electro spinning method to, to uh, get some uh, titanium oxide, zinc titanium oxide composite nanowires, and uh, this nanowires also show some uh, enhanced the performance. And also we can show, uh, we, besides this complete nanowires, we can, we can also show, uh, form some uh, cautious nano, uh, nanowires and also uh, super lattice nanowires and also branched nanowires. And all this, all this, uh, this methods, we can enhance the uh, photo count of uh, uh, nanowire, uh, nanowire devices. Uh, this this is the first strategy to enhance the photo current. Another strategy to enhance the photo current is we can is that we can use the organic and inorganic hybrid nanostructures. Here I show some examples. We can use uh, use uh, uh, titanium sulfide or uh, other inor inorganic nanowires, and then we can uh, coat these nanowires with uh, uh, with uh, organic materials. And uh, in this case. Uh, we just uh, we just uh, combined uh, the excellent flexibility of uh, organic nanowires and uh, also uh, the excellent excellent uh, electronic properties of uh, inorganic uh, inorganic materials. We can use the synergetic effects of these two materials to get some enhanced performance. And uh, from this curve, you can see the red curves correspond to the hybrid structure, and the the black curve uh, correspond to the uh, inorganic nanowires. You can see from these curves. Uh, uh, the performance are really uh, enhanced. For this hybrid, hybrid structures, we can form, uh, form into different structures. For example, we can show, we can form into a uh, cautious uh, hybrid structures. We can also uh, form into some hybrid films. Uh, uh, all these two, uh, two, 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 two kinds of uh, structures can uh, show uh, enhanced uh, performance. Uh, here, uh, in this uh, several uh, slides, I chose the, uh, our strategy to uh, enhance the photo kind of performance from the material, uh, material uh, view. And another method, we can, uh, we can uh, get, uh, design some uh, solution to uh, enhance the photo count by the uh, uh, system integration. Yeah, here I show the uh, transistor integrated photo detector systems. We, then we just uh, integrated the, uh, the transistor, nanowire transistors with the uh, nanowire photo detectors. And uh, we just use the uh, amplifier uh, behavior of transistors to amplify the uh, performance. And here shows the uh, circuit of uh, the systems. And the, from this, uh, uh, in these systems, we mainly have three kinds of devices. The first one is nanowire photo detectors. And uh, the, uh, beside this one, we also use uh, uh, reference uh, resistor, and also we use nanowire transistors. We use a different materials to, fa to, uh, to fabricate uh, this different kind of uh, 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 devices. And uh, uh, for these systems, and uh, uh, in, dark, uh, in dark state, uh, both the photo detector and the, re the reference, uh, the reference uh, resistors are in uh, high resistance uh, uh, state. Uh, and so uh, at this state, uh, the transistor is also in off state. Uh, by uh, light, uh, light irradiation, that means under light uh, irradiation, irradiation, the photo generated electron hole pairs uh, cause the carrier concentration uh, just uh, increase. And the transistor is thus in the on state, right? Uh, in the on state, in the on state, uh, it is result in a very large current output from the source electrode, and this behavior will enhance the photo, uh, enhance the photo current of the systems. And uh, for our systems, the on off ratio uh, of the systems will increase from uh, to about uh, four or five orders of magnitude 
magnitude higher than the conventional uh, photo detector devices. And uh, here, uh, the, the, these strategies are very uh, universal method. We can use the, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this idea to enhance the performance of uh, UV detector and also available detector and also uh, uh, infrared, infrared detectors. Uh, uh, in this part, I will show the uh, other solutions to uh, for the large area device uh, device arrays. Uh, as I just said, I, as I uh, just said, we we try to make some uh, all the nano wire arrays on a very large area, and with this the uh, uh, large area nano wire arrays, then we can easily make some device arrays. We can use different methods to make uh, all the nano wires uh, uh, arrays. In this in this slide, I will show you one example. We use some uh, near field. Uh, electron spin method to get some nano y or micro nano y uh, arrays. Yeah, here shows the structure of the systems, and here shows the uh, the nano y uh, arrays. You can see that we can make this uh, this nano y uh, nano y arrays in one direction or in two directions. Besides the spin nano y, we can also make some curved nano or nano y or some even a spring like nano y arrays. And with the nanowires, we, and we can also control the, uh, the density of the nanowire arrays, and also we can uh, uh, just print these nanowires on different, uh, different kind of flexible uh, substrate, for example, PI substrate, PD substrate, and PDMA substrate. Uh, this near uh, field electron beam method is a very uh, power and a control controllable way to get this pattern nanowire or micro nanowires. With my with this pattern nanowire arrays, then we can make some uh, other the uh, device arrays. For example, I show here we show we, we design some uh, special patterns. Uh, with these patterns, uh, for the uh, most uh, uh, for this this uh, uh, this uh, devices, there are only one nanowires. And uh, for this, uh, there are two nanowires and three nanowires. Yeah, that means we can control the density of, the, we can control the number of nanowires in the devices. And with the increase of nanowires, the photo count are increased. Then finally, we can get a, a, a special pattern as we lead to the device, uh, device, uh, devices pattern. Yeah, that's it by uh, tuning the, 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 the photo count. Yeah, we can design it, uh, we can get some uh, special patterns. And with this, uh, this uh, strategy, we can improve the performance of nanowire uh, detect, uh, nano detectors. And uh, with the, uh, these solutions, then we can make some uh, image sensors. I will, I will show uh, uh, two examples. The first example, we can use, make uh, some uh, UV image sensors. And uh, the second one is we can use some broadband image sensors. Yeah, that's just the means. Uh, with this uh, strategy to improve the photo performance, we can get large area uh, photo detector arrays for flexible image sensors. The first one is flexible uh, UV image sensors. Uh, the material we use is just, uh, as I, just, I, I told you before, is we use the quantum zinc oxide, the quantum dots decorated the uh, zinc oxide nanowise. And with this, uh, uh, the quantum dots, we can improve, enhance the performance, just like as I, as I just said. Uh, these devices also show very good performance and the different bending states. And then we can design this uh, large area uh, image sensors and, and the UV uh, light irradiation. Ir ir then we can re really get some image, images. For example, we can, we can, uh, we can uh, get involved information about the different photo current and then we can get the image. Yeah, we can use uh, F letter F and they can be kind of the image about that F, yeah, right? Uh, but uh, uh, for uh, some uh, real applications, we need some uh, image sensor, not only uh, re uh, response to UV, uh, UV light, we may need uh, some uh, uh, image sensor response to uh, other uh, light with, uh, with uh, other uh, wavelengths, for example, uh, we, need, we may need some uh, image sensors response to visible light or with response to uh, infrared uh, uh, infrared light, and then uh, we designed uh, uh, a broadband uh, image sensor. We just change uh, this strategy is very simple. We just change the uh, previous thing outside with uh, a narrow band gap uh, semi detector is uh, chain sulfide. We use chain sulfide quantum dot detector is uh, nano wise, and uh, you can see here we can really detect this uh, nano wise with quantum, this uh, quantum dots. And uh, with this zinc uh, chain uh, sulfide quantum dot, quantum dot, we can really uh, uh, broaden this. Uh, uh, Response uh, uh, wavelength. Yeah, you can see here uh, for this uh, maturity response to uh, UV light, uh, visible light, and uh, some uh, near uh, near uh, infrared uh, uh, light. And then we can make some uh, uh, image sensors uh, arrays. Yeah, here is uh, choose the uh, structure of the image sensor, and then we, we try we try to compare the 
uh, the, the, the performance of the uh, UV, uh, UV image sensors with the broadband uh, image sensors. This upper image shows the, uh, the image, uh, image uh, the, the result of uh, UV uh, image sensor. The, 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 the below this, uh, it shows the uh, broadband image sensor. You can see we input two, uh, two different images. And for the uh, UV, UV, UV image sensor, it, uh, only, it can only show, uh, show uh, the uh, several, so uh, some part of the the image because of it, because this image sensor only responds to UV light. But for the uh, broadband image sensors, they show a very broad, uh, very broad uh, response. So you can show uh, the entire image. You can see here it's my face and it's a bird, right? Yeah, that means we can get more information with the broadband image sensors. Okay. And uh, uh, with this, uh, as I just said, with uh, this uh, nano wire arrays, we can get some uh, image sensors. But uh, with this image, we can get uh, we can get uh, really uh, get some uh, image. But with nano wire image sensors, we can I, I said we can see the image. But can we in situ uh, memorize this uh, this images? Uh, yeah. Uh, following this work, we just designed some uh, artificial visual uh, storage systems. Uh, for uh, here uh, shows the cartoon about uh, our uh, I, I, uh, our video story system. We can, through our eyes we can see the see the image, and this image was transferred by the optic nerves to our brains, and it was remembered by our our brains, right? Uh, we we can use the image sensors uh, to uh, mimic our eyes, but how uh, can we uh, use some electronic device to mimic our brains? Yeah, in this uh, work, we just reintroduce the uh, introduce the uh, memories into the systems to get to mimic our brains, and then in these systems we can see the image, and in, and then we can in situ uh, in, in situ uh, uh, memorize the uh, images. Yeah, here shows the one picture about uh, this uh, uh, this uh, systems. Uh, we uh, it conclude uh, is to include a, a, a nano wire image sensor, and uh, it's uh, an uh, in situ. Uh, integrated uh, memories, and for this memories is, is just like our our brains, and we use the as I just said we can use the near field uh, uh, electrical spin method to get this uh, uh, nano uh, nano wire arrays with a control density. So that means we can control the uh, low resistance resist state and high resistance states of our uh, image sensors, and uh, which we need to uh, in situ. Uh, in situ, uh, memorize the images. We, we, we need to make the uh, the uh, different uh, resistance states of the memories uh, to comparable with the uh, image uh, the the image sensors. Yeah, here we use, we just designed the uh, metal oxide uh, metal oxide oxide based uh, uh, memories, and uh, here you can see the low resistance state. High resistance states, we can uh, make this uh, resistance uh, just uh, compare with the comparable with the uh, low resistance state and high resistance states of the uh, photo detectors. Then and then we can design this kind of flexible artificial visual storage systems. We input uh, butterfly shaped um, images. Then we can uh, we, through this uh, uh, image sensors we can get some get these images and these images can be uh, storage uh, can be stored on the uh, memories and after you can see after one day the the image is still there and after one week the the image is just still there and then, and then we can also erase this image and reuse this uh, this uh, image that we, means we can re, we can really design the re, the useful um, uh, artificial video uh, video storage systems. Okay. Uh, Following this part, we just, we just uh, as I said, we just want to make uh, the uh, robot uh, behaving like our uh, humans. So we may need some uh, they need to make the uh, flexible uh, image sensors uh, much smart. Yeah. So uh, for uh, uh, following this work, we designed uh, some uh, uh, integrated uh, infrared uh, photo detector uh, photo detector systems. Yeah. I, uh, as you know, uh, related to uh, infrared uh, photo detectors, yeah, uh, the uh, flexible uh, infrared photo detectors, uh, the uh, R of ratio uh, is uh, uh, quite low for this nano wide, uh, nano wide because uh, uh, caused by the ambient noise and electro noise. Uh, this is a very famous images uh, for uh, uh, for infrared photo detector researchers. You can see here we can uh, with the infrared photo detectors we can design we can detect us, uh, the bird but uh, for the for the for the uh, for the object in the in the red circle we don't know uh, what it is 
yeah, maybe it's a bird, maybe it's a dog. Yeah, from a uh, for conventional uh, infrared photo detector, but actually it's a, a bird. It's a bird, but for conventional uh, photo detector, because of the uh, low uh, off ratio, we can we can only get a very uh, far low image. This this far image will cause the uh, wrong uh, wrong result about uh, the detector. So, uh, how to improve this uh, improve this uh, off ratio? We just uh, introduce the our uh, the, the photo. Uh, the uh, transistor uh, uh, integrated photo data just, I, just uh, uh, as I said. Yeah, uh, with this, uh, as I said, with this uh, uh, for transistor integrated, uh, integ uh, integ integrate, uh, we can enhance the on off ratio, uh, on -off ratio of the, the uh, infrared, uh, infrared systems, then we can get a very, uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, clear image. Here, here I show the a result for a conventional photo detector. Here uh, shows the result for the integrated photo detector. You can see that for our integrated photo detector systems, we can very, very, we can uh, really uh, enhance the uh, enhance the performance and get a clear, uh, clear, uh, clear result. Actually, high contrast uh, image can efficiently simulate the human visual uh, nerve and make it easier for people to recognize and remember an image. And uh, then. Uh, we uh, we use these systems uh, to mimic our uh, eye uh, eye brain systems, and uh, we uh, constructed the two components to artificially uh, sim uh, simulate the human uh, uh, vision system. Uh, for this system, we control and uh, photo detector array uh, yeah, just means uh, image sensor to uh, perceive the images. And another part is an artificial neuron uh, network. Uh, we use this artificial neuron uh, network to recognize uh, images. Yeah. Uh, to uh, simulate and uh, expand the functionality uh, of human uh, vision, it is crucial to obtain clear Im image information, right? And uh, uh, for uh, our uh, neuro, uh, artificial neural network, it's a control, uh, it's a, uh, uh, can, uh, include three layers, input, input layer, uh, hidden layer, and output layer. And for our integrated, integrated systems, uh, uh, to get uh, the uh, get uh, recognition rate higher than uh, 1998, uh, uh, 19, 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 uh, that means uh, our uh, systems are more efficient and uh, can uh, get a more, more correct uh, result compared with uh, uh, conventional uh, conventional uh, uh, photo detector system. Yeah, that's uh, the main part of my talk. And uh, to conclude uh, my talk, uh, 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 I will just say that uh, from uh, our result, we found, we found that uh, the semiconductor nanowires are very excellent candidate for uh, high performance photo detectors and uh, uh, for uh, the image uh, sensor applications. And uh, later, uh, with uh, printing method or other, or other methods, we can uh, just uh, get uh, uh, flexible devices or systems uh, 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 with a uh, very uh, large area and a large scale and uh, at a very uh, low cost. And uh, uh, with this uh, improvement, I think uh, we can really find some, some applications in artificial intelligence and medical applications and, uh, uh, and others. And finally, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, the faculty and staff in my group, uh, Professor Lozen and Professor Van Lili and uh, uh, postdoc uh, Lila and uh, also the graduate student in my group and also uh, the funding source, uh, National Natural Science uh, Foundation of China. And uh, finally, I uh, would like to thank you, uh, thank you all for your attention. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Professor Shen, for a very interesting talk. And uh, so uh, you, there are many people who wanted to ask you many questions, but uh, because of the time limitation, we've restricted that one to three questions. OK. And Last question is, uh, the Professor Shen, thanks for your wonderful talk on flexible image sensor. Can you give a brief introduction of tactile sensor in your group and is it possible to integrate these two kinds of sensors together? Okay, yeah, that's another story about my group here. Uh, in my group, uh, besides the image sensors, we can also make some uh, tactile sensors. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, recently, there are many uh, researchers work on 
uh, the tactile sensors to make electronic skins. Yeah, in my group, we try, we mainly try to uh, use some bio, uh, bio, bio materials or, or some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, biocompatible materials to uh, get some uh, electronic, uh, electronic skins uh, uh, for uh, some uh, self application. For example, we try to uh, use some uh, this biocompatible uh, compatible materials to make biocompatible electronic skins for uh, the uh, medical uh, applications. And uh, to integrate these two different kinds of sensors, actually we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we use different, uh, uh, we just uh, use, uh, make these this, uh, devices for, for a different, uh, different uh, sensing application. For example, uh, we can integrate the tactile sensor with the photo detectors. The tactile sensors can uh, get some, some, information, some, some information about the, the change of the pressure. But the image sensors can, can get some information about the light. Yeah, the, yeah that's uh, uh, to make uh, this, uh, this uh, different kinds of sensors uh, integrate together. Uh, uh, we can use a different kind of design. For example, we can make some curved metal metals to con connect uh, these systems, these two different uh, uh, sensors. Or we can use also uh, metal. Uh, other methods, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, I think uh, uh, people can find uh, many work uh, just related to this part. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Shishi, and uh, thank you. And next question is, how about uh, the photo detector's lifetime, and does it need any special packaging? Okay, okay, that's a good question. And uh, uh, for the uh, lifetime of the photo detectors, and, and I think. Uh, uh, one thing is related to the uh, to the materials. Yeah, for uh, for for example, for the metal oxide materials, uh, the material is quite stable, and the 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 the, the, the electrode is metal, and this for the final device is quite stable. But for some other material, for example, uh, sulfide or nitride or, or, or antimonide, uh, these materials are not stable in air. So for these devices, we need some special packaging. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it depends on the mature. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. The next question is, Dr. Shen, can you give us the resolution of flexible image sensor? Okay, okay, that's a very good question. And, uh, and from my slides and from my talk, you can see that the uh, resolution of uh, our work is, uh, till now is uh, uh, not very good. And uh, uh, because uh, to make uh, the high resolution, uh, resolution uh, image sensors, we need some, uh, complicated uh, fabric fabricating process. For example, we need some uh, complicated photo uh, photo list graph uh, graphic uh, method uh, process to uh, get these uh, devices. But uh, currently, uh, we we don't have this uh, kind of uh, facility, so we can only uh, get some uh, image sensor with low uh, low resolution. But for but uh, in our work, we we show some uh, special idea that we can use this nano wire for application in, in image sensors and later we will try to improve the performance uh, in, in, in performance and resolution of the flexible image sensors by uh, control one, one thing is to control the density of nano wires another thing is to use uh, to get a uh, more complicated uh, for the lithography uh, process or, or, or some other method to improve the resolution uh, yeah i think uh, the, uh, the resolution can be improved in later yeah thank you okay Thank you very much, and uh, yeah. thank you for uh, giving an excellent talk. And then, on behalf of the organizers of IconX, and we would like to present this uh, certificate to you. And uh, so, okay. if you would have met personally, would have given you this one, but we'll send this one to you electronically. Okay, and thank you very much again for spending time with us and then sharing your exciting developments in the image sensors. Okay, so thank you. I'd like to welcome my distinguished colleague and co-organizer of the IconX talks and uh, Professor Paul Reyes from the University of California, Los Angeles.